Dance is the language of love, or at least that's the motto of a variety of birds in rainforests all around the world. Some animals fight for their mates, but why do that when you can settle things with style? One small South American bird takes his dance to the next level by incorporating some moves that are big on the pop scene. But when you're a bird of very small stature, you have to do whatever it takes to catch the eye of an eligible bachelorette in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's 30 minutes of interesting animal info for you, the listener. I'm Joe. And I am Carlos. And today we're talking about a bird that claps for himself. But more on that later. Nice. Yeah. That's very conceited. Well, you know, when you got it, you got it. Very true. Uh, I always change the name of the tagline to... It, it, it was originally your 30 minutes of interesting animal info, but I always say interesting. it's 30 minutes of interesting animal info for you. It doesn't change the truth. It doesn't change the truth. Right. It just changes the branding. Yeah. We should let's copyright it. <laughs> one of them. <laughs> you, no, no one can deliver any interesting animal info in 30 minute increments ever again after that. Or they can, but they can't say your 30 minutes of interesting <laughs> yeah. animal info. Right, exactly. So, but we're talking about the red capped mannequin. Yeah, mannequin bird. Not a mannequin. Yeah, it's like not... a, like the, the the just the creepiest thing ever. Yeah, the, a cousin of a piece of bread, mannequin. What? <laughs> it's spelled like that, like manna from heaven, kin, k i n. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the cousin of a piece of bread. Got it. The kin of manna. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um. And I've got lots of nicknames here. Okay, so, here we go. Buckle up, Buttercup. That's not one of them. <laughs> uh, we'll start with the throwaways. Uh, mannequin Begin Again. Like there was an old man named Michael Mannequin. Um, <laughs> the Master Moonwalking Mentalis Mannequin. Okay. Because uh, that's the species, which we'll talk about later. All right, now we're getting into the, the, the meat of it. Let's see if I can do this on the first try. The passerine pájaro pequeño y picante. <laughs> the s- small and spicy passerine bird. That's a, that's a, it's good to have Spanish stuff for our Chilean fans. Yes, we do have some Chilean fans. Yeah. So they're going to balk at my pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, another one that I got from the internet was Birdie Jean. Birdie Jean is not my birdie. <laughs> <laughs> She's just a birdie who thinks that I am that one. Yeah, you should just say birdie for most of the words. It's all birds. Yeah. Uh, and, and here's a nickname from Brian, our artist. Dance, dance, bird illusion. <laughs> <laughs> dance, dance, dance. Okay. But yes, we are doing another bird. You didn't know it was bird month. Two Did in you? a row and like the th- third or fourth this season. Plus, there we ended this last season with one. Yeah, we do a lot of birds. Birds are interesting. It's just been a birdly time, and somebody suggested a bird to me today. Really? Yeah. I would like to hear about it. It's a woodpecker. Woodpeckers are cool. Yeah. Huh. I saw one in The Fox and the Hound. I saw one in my backyard. Nice. So we both have seen them. Humble brag. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we've talked about what we're going to call this thing, I like this, the small and spicy. Uh, okay. This is a very spicy bird. Uh, let's talk about how we can classify it. Um, it lives in a kingdom, a far, far away kingdom that's not that far away. It's actually all around us because we're all in it. And that kingdom is Animalia. Right. You like it. You love it. You got to have it. <laughs> <laughs> See, you can't remember. You know you love it. You're in it. Yes, that's right. The phylum is Chordata, little bird, hollow spine. Uh, this class, say with me, Aves. We're getting there. Yeah. Especially since we've been in class 80s for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, the order? Passeriformes. Hence my passerine thing. Yeah, that was the Bowerbirds for sure. Yep. And I think... Have we done other passeriforms? Um, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Then a lot of birds of prey, which are different. I Vultures the, are in their own. The lyrebird might have been a passeriform. Yeah, okay, yeah, it is. Um, the... Family is Pipridae. That's fun. Yeah. Pipridae. 
Uh, the genus is Ceratopipra. And the species is Mentalis. That's why I said the Mentalis mannequin. It's just mental. It's mental. It's mental. <laughs> Says uh, Mentos. Ron Weasley. Um, let's talk about where this thing lives because a bird in the hand is worth two on the dance floor. <laughs> it lives in Central and South America, as you mentioned in the intro. Uh, it lives in countries such as Mexico, Costa Rica, Honduras, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Colombia, Ecuador. Peru, and Panama. And Belize. Yeah, but I couldn't say that with a cool accent. <laughs> Belize. Belize Navidad. <laughs> <laughs> Belize Navidad. Uh, it loves moist forests, but who doesn't? Right, exactly. Me. I, I do. I don't even... I don't even... I, I send my forest back if it's not moist enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want, you want it to be pink in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> How would you like your forest moistened? <laughs> Very. That's my answer. Um, in fact, if you for rainforest birds in a mature rainforest, mannequins make up one third of them. Not the number of species, but all of the birds in the area, a third of them are going to be mannequins. Okay. Which is crazy. There's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about what it looks like now that we know where it lives. He's a little guy. He's small. He's very small. Uh, mannequin actually means little man. <laughs> in Middle Dutch. So, yeah, he is a little guy. Uh, males have black feathers on their bodies with, you guessed it, a bright red cap on top. Because we're talking about the red-capped mannequin. I don't know if I said that. You did. But, yeah, red-capped mannequin. So, it, the the top of its head, including its eyes, um, and all, partway down its back, all the way down to its mullet end, is red. Brilliant red. Bright red, yes. Scarlet, crimson, I don't know if those are the same, but it's bright red. Um, its throat is yellow, or at least its chin. I didn't know they had chins, but apparently that's just the part just underneath the beak. Hmm. But the throat would be the whole yeah, the whole apron. Um, its thighs are also yellow, so it has thunder thighs. Even yeah. though thunder is not yellow, lightning is. <laughs> Lightning's not yellow either. It's white. Um, or blue. Uh, it also has pale yellowish-white linings in its wings so it's mostly black with like some pale stripes um a red head yellow uh legs and chin and then it has a, sh a short sharp black beak okay females are a dull olive with a darker back and paler belly and that's it dull olive huh? that's all they look like that's all they look like so Let's move on to diet, and... We can move on to diet if you want. Sure, yeah. There's, we haven't skipped anything. I love it. I mean, in um, the description, for, you might want to know how big it is. Yeah. Do you have that? Uh, no. I mean, I have that. Oh. <laughs> we can move right into the listener's favorite part of the show. The part <laughs> of the show that's introduced by you. I was hoping we could move on to diet. And it's also the part of the show where I give Carlos a quiz in order to convey the animal's size and dimensions in the most relatable terms. Uh, but we do not have a new measure up intro this time, but we can go back to the, the wellspring that was provided to us last time, which is Tom. Yeah, Tom. Uh, he said also that uh, he would send us an email saying just heard it the episode great stuff you guys had me and my wife in stitches and he said we were right in the money he is a hefty 6'3 and 240 pounds so a barrel chested man's man uh he's got a beard and he says he says he also likes to carve seahorses from lime wood if that counts as woodworking and i said of course it's it does tom is everything i hoped he would be <laughs> <laughs> and he's also uh the hero that we uh deserve and need right now in terms of measure ups uh, without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. Measure up. <laughs> <laughs> that came out of that barreled chest. <laughs> <laughs> How endearing. <laughs> A chill ran down my spine. 
Yeah, and yeah, that was great. That was a uh, that was that was like building the the kind of like the anticipation, the tension. What what are you gonna get it right? Are you gonna get it wrong? Is we'll find the out. The cackling I feel is directed at me, <laughs> and I'm personally offended. <laughs> <laughs> you'll take it and you'll like it. But thanks again, Tom. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Let's get right into it. Let's talk about the length sure, of the mannequin. If we want to. <laughs> it's four inches or 10 centimeters. Four inches. Got it. Yeah. How many red capped mannequin birds go into the El Castillo at Zunantunich, an ancient Mayan structure in Belize? Zunantunich. Mm-hmm. That's fun. Yeah. So it's the next. Like the height? Yeah, how many birds' lengths go into the height? Okay. Um, Here's a hint. The structure okay. was a Mayan temple that was built around 800 AD. And it's the second... I read it was the second tallest structure in Belize. But that could mean the second tallest ancient structure. Because the the other one, the, the first tallest one, was also like a temple. A Mayan temple. So. They just don't build anything more than two stories tall. Maybe in the whole country. Also, is it ancient if it's AD, eight hundred AD? Yeah, I don't know what ancient qualifies for. I thought it was like, like BC, like thousands of years. I thought that was ancient. Yeah. Well, Mayans are an ancient people group. They've been there for a while. Yeah. Well. Anyway. I guess yeah. Anything b- before. Uh. 1,000, I think you could call as ancient. Really? That's what I, I mean. That's just my personal preference for well, ancient. Well, but but you wouldn't say like first century Israel is ancient Israel. Ancient Israel is like Old Testament Israel. Compared to modern day Israel, I would say it's ancient. Is ancient just an adjective, or does it mean something like specific? I bet you it's both. I bet you to historians it means something, and to everyone else it's just an adjective like that a, means very old. Yeah. Okay. So I have no idea how big this thing is, but it's a temple. Maybe it looks like one of those ziggurat things from the... No, wait. They, they are Mayans. The the Chichen Itza, that's, that's Mayan in yeah. Mexico. And that's oh, what... it says belonging to a very distant past and no longer in existence. Also, noun, an old person. <laughs> one of the ancients. <laughs> a solitary ancient in a tweed jacket. <laughs> Is <laughs> is the sentence they give it? That's give uh, that's not one that I'm going to add to my lexicon. <laughs> I'm going to stick with uh, the wizened. Yes. Um, wizened. So the sagacious, sagacious, she, she. sagacious. So Chichen Itza is like, I don't know. It's like 200 feet tall. I think. Where is that? That's in the Yucatan. Okay. I've been there. That's where the Mayans were going to blow up the world or something like that in 2012. Um, sure. Yeah, that was that was what their calendar said. In we're, 2012, we, are gonna blow it we up. will blow up the world. Um, so, I I mean, that that's like one of the wonders of the semi-ancient world. <laughs> so, it's got to be smaller than that. Yeah. It can't be a spectacular Chichen Itza. So... Um, we'll say that it's, uh, that it's, uh, let's say it's a hundred feet tall. It's easy ish. And we're talking about four inches. And so there are three, uh, red capped mannequins in a foot. And I said a hundred feet. So we're going to talk about 300 mannequins. Final answer. Go. The answer is 390. That was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. 130 feet is the is is El Castillo. Slam dunk. 40 meters. I mean, not a slam dunk. It was kind of... It, it like rolled around the rim and then fell off at the end, but I was very close. <laughs> uh, here's weight. It, you would have gotten something in, if it was horseshoes. Yes. Or maybe like not, but not cornhole. If you're, not like if you're it landed playing. on the board, but not in the hole. Or if it like... It slid, the beanbag slid, and then like part of it ended up on top of the, on the board. So yeah. it still kind of counted. Uh, yeah, like in a friendly game, that counts. Yeah, half <laughs> half points. Uh, weight sixteen grams or one or zero point five six ounces. 
Okay. How many red-capped mannequin birds go into the weight of a Baird's tip here? The national animal of Belize. We, we just talked about the taper. Yeah, but not the Baird's tip here. Or the Bayer, Bay, B-A-I-R-D-S. Those were, uh, I mean, on the whole, those were those were chunky fellows. Mm-hmm. Um, Here's a hint. Uh, In 2006, the former Costa, Ric- uh, Costa Rican Minister of Environment and Energy, Carlos Manuel Rodriguez and Gun... Candy and Chandy and Candy. I'm imagining E C H is a hard K. Sure. Uh, was attacked and injured by a tapir. Tapir attacks on humans are rare, but may happen if the animal feels threatened. Respect their distance. I think they were like 600 pounds. The uh, the South American tapir that we did. So I'm gonna guess in that region. Yeah, 600 pounds is a good one. And this is 0.5 ounces. Which means there are 32 in a pound. So 32 times 600 is 18,000. Wait, yes. So it's 18,000. And I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to sprinkle a little dust on that and call it 19,000 for that two. Okay. Instead of thirty, because I was doing I was doing my multiplication based on thirty. So, hit me with it. Uh, seventeen thousand two hundred and eighty-five birds. Oh, but it's six hundred and five pounds. The tape here. Your math was off. I multiplied um, six hundred by thirty, and that would give. give it's also five point six ounce or point five six ounces. So. Yeah, so that variation, the fact that I multiplied by 30 and not 32, and also I was five pounds off, all probably lead to the standard deviation. Yeah. I'm not using that word right. <laughs> Are we done? Yeah. Birds. Hit us with some not, fast n- facts. Not tapirs. All right, unlike many birds, female mannequins are fine with other species of birds being in their feeding territory. And after they mate, they lay a clutch of two eggs at a time in a nest near the ground. The male doesn't help because he can dance if he wants to, but he will leave his eggs behind. <laughs> Either that or the female's like, beat it. Ugh. This is this is good. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with it. Um, the eggs have brown scrawls on them, so they camouflage into the detritus around them. Wait a minute, what? Brown. Scrawls? Scrawls. Oh. Like it's scrawled on, like... Interesting. Well, it's just funny because the scrawls in the Marvel universe can like, are like they can shape shift and blend in. What is a scrawl? It's a scroll. I have no idea what you're talking about. This is not it, Marvel universe. That you haven't I'm familiar seen Captain with. Marvel yet. No, I haven't. So yeah, <laughs> there are <that>. scrolls. <laughs> Interesting. I don't think that those are related. This is scrawl like to crawl. Okay. Is a W scroll. in there? <laughs> uh, yes. Like, you know, just to write, to scrawl something onto a piece of paper. Right. But, you know, you just picture an egg with, like, you know, scrawls on there. Doodles. Yeah. Gotcha. Doodle eggs. Eggs hatch after two to three weeks and are on their own, strutting their stuff and cutting their own rugs a month after that. <laughs> and that's all I got. Okay. Time for the let's, major fact. Let's get the fact going. And let it be major. <laughs> <laughs> let there be major mess in this fact. Uh, like Birds of Paradise and uh, the Bowerbird, mannequin birds engage in complex mating displays. The red-capped mannequin in particular has a few moves to woo the ladies that are fairly unique. Mannequin birds move very quickly in general. They look like they're like on fast forward. They look like old timey videos where the it was just sped up. Yeah. Uh, like turning their heads, wing beats, and hops are extremely fast. And if you're just looking at them, it looks like they're teleporting. Like it, it's crazy how fast they are. Um, to analyze their courtship displays, researchers like ecologist Dr. Kimberly Bostwick at Cornell University have used high speed cameras and then slowed it down and watched what they do. Which um, is flying. It's more than no, fly. Not teleporting. 
Yeah, yeah, that's like they're teleporting. Like, oh, they're they're but, just flying yeah, fast. That their hypothesis was that the red capped mannequin actually is able to teleport matter from one place to another. So they. This was their experiment, and they were extremely disappointed. <laughs> uh, research has revealed that the males, the male does a complicated dance to impress a female, and the dance has elements in it that are common among all these birds. Um, the dance involves flying between two perches, a main branch, and a secondary one. The bird moves in a way that's too fast for the human eye to really comprehend what he's doing, but... Female birds seem to be able to pick up on it. Um, he'll turn around or hop from side to side so fast that it looks like he's got a bad Wi-Fi connection with a super low ping. <laughs> <laughs> You're clipping, man. I can't. I can't pay attention to this dance. <laughs> he's on so much lag. Yeah. Uh, he will also move toward the female with a little slide that looks like Tarzan tree surfing. Like, if you look at a video of it, it looks like he's just, like, for no reason at all, sliding along this branch. It's so cool. But it's actually teeny tiny little hops that are extremely fast. Yeah, it's like he's vibrating. Yeah, like a phone off of a desk. Yeah, and just... Yeah. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Um, that's great. This, si- this slide has been called a moonwalk because he'll face away from the female um, to show off his legs. Because the, the bright yellow of his legs are, mm-hmm. like, an attractive, like, thing that draws their eyes. Um, so he'll, like, put his tail feathers up, expose those thunder thighs, and back it up. Lightning legs. We'll yeah. call him that. Back it up, back it up, because his daddy taught him good. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a song? Yeah, it's a YouTube viral video. Okay. By the uh, Gregory Brothers. N- never mind. Uh, <laughs> look it up. Um, so... So he'll slide along backwards towards her along the branch and and, and tantalizes her with his dance moves. Uh, when he lands on the main perch, uh, to the naked eye, it looks like he just puffs up really briefly and makes a popping sound. But what he's actually doing uh, is opening his wings and beating them against his feathers three times. Wow. So, like, literally, if you're watching this... It just looks like pop, and like he, like he like puffs up a little bit, and then he's but like in slow motion, he opens his wings slightly, fans out his back tail feathers, and like rakes his wings against his tail feathers to make like a, like a, a zipping sound, like you're like run, running a pencil along like a spiral bound notebook, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he does it three times every time. Um, and it's just like it's so fast it sounds like just a pop to to us. Did you ever see that one video of the guy who goes down the stairs and he's got one leg in front of the other and he kind of like has a hat on, he puts his hand on the hat and then it looks like he's his legs aren't moving but he goes down the stairs? No. It was it was like one of those like people are awesome videos back from like 2010 but it looks like he's just like glitching down the stairs, but he's actually moving his feet really fast as oh, he goes down. And that's crazy. So that that's kind of like their, yeah, what they're doing with their slide dance. I have to see that now. Slip sliding away. Uh, the popping sound. Uh, well, actually, so the the wing movement is twice as fast as it as his wings when he's flying, and it's nearly hummingbird speed. So it's not quite that fast, but it's it's close. But like if you see a hummingbird, it just looks like a there's like this blurry thing next to next to them and they're moving around and yeah, hovering yeah it's a it's a bird's wingless body with two just like ethereal shapes next to it and the right. bird's wings moving uh the popping sound it makes attracts the female but warns males that he's got dibs that's what that means the dibs pop <laughs> that sounds delicious <laughs> I would love a dibs pop. Uh, <laughs> he also, in a separate display completely, will open his wings fully and slap them against his sides. And that's also very fast. It sounds like clapping. He's clapping for himself. Got it. I see why you said that now. Yeah. It's a little firecracker shrimp. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all I got. That's the that's the mannequin bird and his ludicrous display. <laughs> Look up a video of it when you get to work or get home. 
because it's great. Yeah, Mannequin Bird Dance. Yes. It's pretty great. Just type in Mannequin Bird on YouTube. The red-capped mannequin is one of the more common ones, if not the most common one. So that's probably going to be the one that you see on the video. Yeah, also just um, if you want to learn more about it, look up Dr. Kimberly Botswick. She's like an ornithologist, and she studies mannequin birds. And she's got a couple videos where she explains why they do certain things in their displays. Yeah, they're apparently really, really, really tough to um, observe because they are really high up in the trees. They move insanely fast, and they like dense foliage. Yep. So, um, yeah, good good on them for, for getting some nice footage. Yep. All, all we know is that the very small eagle has landed because yeah. it's moving. That's the last joke. I'm sorry. All right. So for you out there in podcast, you doff your red cap, summon up some courage, and bust a move the likes of which the world has never seen before, like the mannequin in Life, Death, and Taxonomy. Hey, Taxonomy Titans. We aren't great at impressive dances or moonwalking, but if you're impressed with this podcast, we love to hear from you. Leave a review on your favorite podcasting app or tell your friends about your favorite episode of LDT. Your endorsement helps us grow more than any fancy marketing methods or calls to action that come from us. Also, right now, or as soon as you park, go into your phone's recording app and record a measure up intro. It only takes a second and it really warms our hearts. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. podcast <laughs> hey taxonomy titans we are great we are great <laughs> <laughs> good night everybody <laughs>